Let's get rocking and rolling. The thought for the day is when the student is ready, the teacher appears. When the student is ready, the teacher appears. Um, I chose this because what we're gonna read in Your Invisible Power is very interesting today. Um, also, I believe that very much so because the universe is organized by mathematics, that when it's, it's kind of like when you trace your steps back and you think about all the people that have come into your life at the certain time, it's all specifically designed because of your level of consciousness and awareness at that time, right? Which is why the mentors that you have and everything, it's like all of a sudden, it's just like they dropped out of nowhere and this is like the perfect person for you. But it's also what I want you to think is, because a lot of you are also, you know, mentors to other people or leaders in the same way, you're this teacher that appears when the student is ready. So sometimes that actually gives you a sense of if, so like you're going to notice that as you keep growing your business, there are going to be people that come into your business or whatever programs that are not ready. They're not ready. So you don't, this is again, pushing versus being pulled. If someone's not ready to work with you or if someone is causing a whole stink and like we can go into a whole conversation on really allowing the universe to bring the right people in because whenever, think to yourself, anytime you've ever forced something in your life, how well did that go for you? Right? Very good. So when the student is ready, the teacher appears and that's both ways, okay? So we're reading from chapter, the next chapter in um, Your Invisible Power. So it's the one that's titled Why I Took Up the Study of Mental Science, okay? So one of the things I want you to pay attention to is she starts to talk about um, entering into the spirit of, of it. So this is like, she, uh, she can explain, this is Thomas Troward's work. But as I'm teaching this, as I'm explaining this to you today, come from the place of why do I keep saying, come with enthusiasm, show up within a certain state. When you enter into the spirit of something, and the something, by the way, is your purpose. It's your mission in life. So if do you show up to your mission in life like this, <laughs> no, everything has an energy. So it's like stepping into the spirit of the thing that you're embodying. That was like the whole, a, a big part of Thomas Troward's work is that when you step into the spirit of it, that thing gives you energy. Think of like any time you haven't wanted to go for a workout. Do you ever feel bad that you had the workout? No. We've all like, you put the running shoes on, you got out the door and you're like, man, the minute I got running, I got into the spirit of the, of the exercise. But your head and your ego and your resistance will tell you all the reasons why you shouldn't. Okay, very good. So she starts by saying, I think this chapter is very fascinating actually. She says, I've frequently been questioned about my reasons for taking up the study of mental science. So that's what they call what Troward's work is, mental science. And as to the results of my search, not only in the knowledge of principles, but also in the application of that knowledge for the development of my own life. Such inquiries are, are justifiable because one who essays the role of a messenger of psychological truths can only, be convi as convi can only be convincing as he or she has tested them in the laboratory of personal mental experience. This is particularly true in my case as the only personal pupil, pupil of Judge Troward. So she was the only stu student of his, the great master in mental science whose teaching is based upon the relation born by the individual mind towards the universal creative mind, which is the giver of life and the manner in which that relation may be invoked to secure expansion and fuller expression in the individual life. My initial impulse towards the study of mental science was an overwhelming sense of loneliness. You might wanna write that down. In every life, there must come some such experience of spiritual isolation as pervaded by my life at that period. Notwithstanding the fact that each day found me in the midst of friends surrounded by mirth and gaiety, there were, was a persistent feeling that I was alone in the world. <clears throat> you might wanna see yourself in this chapter. I had been, a, not this next part necessarily, but I had been a widow for about three years, wandering from country to country, seeking for peace of mind, seeking for peace of mind. 
The circumstances and surroundings of my life were such that my friends looked upon me as an unusually fortunate young woman. Although they recognized that I had sustained a great loss when my husband died, they knew that he had left me well provided for, free to go anywhere my pleasure dictated. Yet if my friends could have penetrated my inmost emotions, they would have found a deep sense of emptiness and isolation. This feeling inspired a spirit of unrest, which drove me on and on in fruitless search upon the outside for that which I later learned could only be found within. Can you just pause and look up for a second? <laughs> Can you hear yourself in this paragraph? That's why you're here. It's like everything seems to be going, like I have it all, but why do I feel lonely? Alone in the world. Okay. I had studied Christian science, but it gave me no solace, though fully realizing the great work of, of the great work the scientists were doing and even having the pleasure and privilege of, privilege of meeting Mr. Eddy personally. But it was impossible for me to accept the fundamental teachings of Christian science and make practical application of it. When about to abandon the search for contentment and re resign myself to resume a life of apparent amusement, a friend invited me to visit the great seer and teacher, Abdul Baha. After my interview with the mo this most wonderful of men, my search for contentment began to take a change. He had told me that I, had, I would travel the world seeking the truth, and when I found it, I would speak it out. The fulfillment of the statement of this great seer then seemed to be impossible, but it carried a measure of encouragement and at least indicated that my former seeking had been in the wrong direction. I began in a feeble, gro groping way to find contentment within myself, for had he not in, in, intimated that I should find the truth. That was the big thing. Uh, that was the big thing and about the only thing I remember of our interview. A few days later, upon visiting the office of a new thought uh, practitioner, my attention was attracted to a book on his table entitled The Edinburgh Lectures on Mental Science by Thomas Troward. It interested me to see that Troward was a retired divisional judge from the Punjab, India. I, pur I purchased the book thinking I would read it through that, e through that evening. Many have endeavored to do the same only to find as I did that the book that must be studied in order to be understood and hundreds have decided just as I did to give it their undivided attention. After finding this treasure book, I went to the country for a few days and while there studied the volume as thoroughly as I could. It seemed extremely difficult. His work is extremely difficult. I have a few of his books. And I decided to purchase another book of Troward's in the hope that its study might not require as much effort. Upon inquiry, I was told that a subsequent volume, The Dory Lectures, was much simpler and better of the two books. When I pr procured it, I found that it, was, it must also be studied. I, it took me weeks and months to get in even a vague conception of the meaning of the first chapter of Dory, which is entitled Entering into the Spirit of It. I mean by this that I, it took me months to enter into the spirit of what I was reading. But in the meantime, a paragraph from page 26 to 27 arrested my attention as seeming the greatest thing I have ever read. Highlight this, because this next paragraph is the greatest thing you'll ever read, okay? I memorized it and endeavored with all my soul to enter into the spirit of Troward's words. The paragraph reads, my mind is a center of divine operation. The divine operation is always for expansion and fuller expression. And this means the production of something beyond what has gone before something entirely new, not included in the past experience, though proceeding out of it by an orderly sequence of growth. Therefore, since the divine cannot change its inherent nature, it must operate in the same manner with me. Consequently, in my own special world of which I am the center, it will move forward to produce new conditions always in advance of any that have gone before. So I invite you to study that paragraph and enter into the spirit of each word because it's like, this is in a nutshell, Troward's mastery. So remember when I had you do this exercise where you stand up and you spin around yourself? I am the center of my own universe, right? I think sometimes you're all still forgetting that because you think that things out here are impacting you, but you don't see that you're impacting it, right? Hold on a second, let me check where we are. 
Okay, great. It took me an effort on my part to memorize this paragraph, but in the endeavor towards this end, the words seemed to carry with them a certain stimulus. Each repetition of the paragraph made it easier for me to enter into this. The exactly what I'd been seeking for. My own desire, my own, sorry, my one desire was for peace of mind. I found it comforting to believe that the, the divine operation in me could expand to fuller expression and produce more and more contentment. In fact, a peace of mind and a degree of contentment greater than I ever know. The paragraph further inspired me with deep interest to feel that the life spark in me could bring into my life something entirely new. I did not wish to obliterate my past experience. That was exactly what Troward said it would not do. The divine operation would not exclude my past experience, but proceeding out of it would bring some new thing that would transcend anything that I had ever experienced before. So you might want to kind of asterisk this. What she's saying there is that no one is erasing your past. However, the new thing is not from the past. It's entirely new. So if you're still hanging out in the past while creating something new, that's not the point, right? The past has brought you here, but everything forward is new. Meditation on these statements brought with it a certain joyous feeling. What a wonderful thing it would be if I could accept and sincerely believe beyond all doubt that this one statement of Troward's was true. Surely the divine could not change its inherent nature, more life and deductive in nature. And since divine life is operating in me, I must be divinely inhabited and the divine in me must operate just as it operates upon the universal plane. This meant that my whole world of circumstances, friends and conditions would ultimately become a, a world of contentment and enjoyment of which I am the center. This would all happen just as soon as I was able to control my mind and thereby provide a concrete center around which the divine energies could play. Surely it was worth trying for. If Troward had found this truth, why not I? The idea held me to my task. Later, I determined to study with the man who had realized and given to the world such a great statement. It had lifted me from my state of despondency. The immediate difficulty was Sorry, the immediate, immediate difficulty was the need for increased finances. So this is a very important piece here. First of all, this idea that when the teacher is ready, sorry, when the student is ready, the teacher appears. Recognizing the divine plan at play, okay, of why you're all here and why people are coming into your sphere, which is really, really important. This idea here in this paragraph that I don't think you can read it enough because like I said, every sentence, my mind is a center of divine operation. Your mind is the same as universal mind. That's the image that you need to start to really understand. The divine operation is always for expansion and fuller expression. What have I been saying? More life. And this means the production of something beyond what has gone before, something entirely new. Therefore, since the divine cannot change its inherent nature, it's always gonna grow whatever you focus on. It must operate in the same manner with me in my own special world of which I am the center. So today, I want you to really take on, you can kind of add that as a subsidiary thought of the day, I am the center, I am the center, I am the center. There is nothing happening outside of you that you are not in full responsibility of. And that is a hard pill to swallow for people. But it's the truth. It's your, you're the center of everything happening to you, 100% responsibility. If you do not like what is happening out here, all you have to do is turn inward and say, what's going on in my mind? Why am I having this experience, right? The other thing to remember though, that's important when we talk about responsibility, remember we're not talking about blame or judgment, we're coming from truth. But the other thing is sometimes people wanna go into, so this is where you wanna be careful. You don't wanna go into, um, you know, why am I still, like, why is this still happening to me? Because that goes into victim. But you also don't wanna go into, okay, why am I constantly attracting this? There's a difference between recognizing the pattern of what you're attracting and understanding the law of rhythm. What's the law of rhythm? Good days, bad days. Yes or no? What goes up must come down. 
the law of rhythm ex exists in everything, in our period, in the moon cycle, in the wave cycle, in every cycle. Labor is the law of rhythm. Everything in life follows the law of rhythm. But for most of us, we wish that we could hang up, hang out on the upswing all the time. We can't hang out on the upswing all the time. You got it. But you would never even appreciate the upswing if you didn't have the downswing. So you need to start to understand the difference between I'm having a bad day or I'm attracting the same thing over and over again. You're all at a very high level of awareness now to be able to tell the difference. Make sense? I am the center of my universe. Take that on today as a really empowering context. That's the spirit of how you want to approach today. Okay, very good. Read that paragraph over and over again. Maybe put it on a post-it note and put it on your computer. Like it's, it's a real gem because when you really break it down, you really see that the power lies only within you, not inside of any other context. Okay, love you ladies. Have a great day. I'll see you tomorrow. Okay, bye.